Good morning. I'm Leonard Hamlin, Canon Missioner of the Washington National Cathedral. And on behalf of our Dean, Randy Hollerith, as well as our Bishop, it is a privilege for me to be able to welcome you on this Wednesday. As we come together for this morning's prayer and devotional moment, I pray that we might be seeking to be walking closer with God in this season and be the disciples that he has called us to be. So won't you join me in a word of prayer? Father in heaven, as we come on this morning, we say thank you. Thank you for who you are, thankful for your presence with us, your love towards us. And now may we be mindful of your love that you have extended to us. Help us on this day that we might not just hear, but that we might be doers as well. So bless us, this we ask in your wonderful name, amen. I ask that you might join me on this day as we turn in John's Gospel to the sixth chapter, the 35th through the 40th verses. And in John's Gospel, we find these words. Then Jesus declared, <clears throat> I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those he has given me but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. Amen. We're listening to this scripture, and of course gathering on this day just a short time after the resurrection for us. After our recognition that he has risen, that he is alive, as well as our celebration of that fact. I would like to believe that all of the words that Jesus had shared with his disciples and has made available through the scriptures to us would still be fresh and in the front of our memories, that he could say it once and that we would be able to hold on to it, that we would hear it and then be able to live it. I would like to believe that these words were clear for all of us. But the truth is, it's important for us to go back, to check, to stay close, to listen over and over again. And so the reading from John on this day begins with one of the I am statements that are found in John's gospel. And I want to remind many of us who may be gathering on this morning that there are seven I am statements found in John. And here we are at the first one that says, I am the bread of life. When you hear all of those statements together and they simply state, I am the bread of life, I am the light of the world, I am the door, I am the good shepherd, I am the resurrection and the life, I am the way, the truth and the life, I am the vine. All of these statements are important for us to hold on to, but on this day we hear that first one, I am the bread of life. When hearing the words, I am the bread of life, I'm certain that many in that moment did not understand or perhaps questioned what Jesus really meant. The importance of bread in their time and even still today for many, the importance of bread to living a natural life 
was apparent for many of them and easy for many of them to relate to as bread was a staple and it satisfied much of their natu natural hunger. It was a great and important part of their diet in order for them to be able to move throughout the day to satisfy their hunger. But now all of a sudden Jesus is taking what is familiar and turning it around. He's taking what they see as satisfying one area and he's positioning it so that it would satisfy another area. Think about it for a moment. Now Jesus is speaking about bread and life in a new manner. The crowd that was listening had seen Jesus, they had heard Jesus, they had witnessed the miracles of Jesus, even some of them part of the feeding of the thousands that he had done with bread and fish. Yet there were many that did not still believe in him. They were present to satisfy one hunger, but Jesus was speaking about satisfying a different hunger. But listen to his words as he says, whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never go thirsty. Heads and minds must have been turning and racing in that moment. And I focus in on that and wish I had more time even this morning because there are two key points of emphasis that I just want to lift for this morning's devotion. That when we listen to Jesus, he says, whoever comes will never go hungry. And whoever believes will never go thirsty. There are two key points being made here. And the first is that we would come in order to satisfy the hunger and we would believe in order to satisfy our thirst. Most of us know what it is to feel hungry and we know what it is to feel thirsty. While both of them touch on a natural need, they produce within us similar but unique feelings. And Jesus says that for him, it's important that we satisfy them both. But many of us, will seek to believe without ever drawing close. Because I do think it's possible to believe at a distance, but getting close provides a knowing that is a foundation of any relationship. It is somehow stronger when you get closer, somehow unique when you get closer. It satisfies something when you get close. So he says, come. There was so much being said about Jesus in this time, and many were looking to satisfy first the natural and then seeking to get close. But it's important that we get close because if we were to take a survey today, there would be so much said about Jesus and questions surrounding Jesus. Think for about a moment how much survey data is available to so many of us. And in any given moment, folk are checking to see what the crowd is saying. They're checking to see what uh, the masses have reported. It is certainly true in the political world in which we live today that so many politicians, they are reading the polls, reading the numbers to see where the crowd is at in order that they can satisfy the crowd but not take care of the needs of the crowd. They're moving with and blowing with every wind and fad that is taking place. But Jesus is talking about not just seeing where the crowd is, but he's talking about here satisfying our needs and not just our wants. Jesus is speaking to those that are listening so that they would not just see the temporary, but that they might see the everlasting. He wanted that those who would choose to follow him, that they would be aware of more than what might be termed the natural, but they would be conscious of that which is spiritual and eternal. He was on a mission and that mission was for life. And it is important for us to get close. When I think about being close and what a difference it makes to spend time, 
like many of you, and in the morning, we wrestle with having that cup of coffee. But this morning, I just decided to have a cup of tea. And while even having the cup of tea, I realized and remembered that there are two different ways that I can make that cup. I could either dip the tea bag in there, or I could leave it in and let it steep for a while. Most of us, when making a cup of tea, are really dippers because it affects our time, it affects our taste, and in that, it affects strength. I remind you today that that's how most of us treat our relationship with Jesus. We're just dippers because we don't want to give the time. We're worried perhaps about how strong it might be. But also, too, we're worried about the taste because we want it to taste a certain way. This morning, I left the bag just to sit and soak. And I pray today that if we're coming to him, we're prepared to follow him so that we might see not just the surface change, but the strength, our time, and that we might taste and see how good he really is. Amen. On this morning, I invite you to join me in that prayer that Jesus prayed with his disciples and taught them to pray. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On this day, I pray that we might come to him in order that we might be able to believe in him. And in those moments, we will not be left hungering or thirsting. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace.